one of the thrills I have is, is of going to concerts with you and of, of um, in your capacity as a music critic and, um, and talking about mm. the performance and what we've heard. How does what you heard uh, with Nimbus this last Sunday fit into the tapestry of uh, concerts in Los Angeles? And <clears throat> what, I mean, there were a couple of things that, that, that struck me that day. One, one of the things that, that uh, immediately struck me was the audience, that you had quite a good audience. Was it your sense that it was their sense that the concert as a whole worked? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I think the variety was was thrilling to them, um, and surprising to them, and and I mean, you you really you you had you had an immense dynamic range in your programming. The, the performers had a kind of a, a sort of an interesting uh, running start into the concert in, in a couple of ways. One was that we had recorded your piece a few weeks before, so we had had a chance to kind of master it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In, in a way and then with the barrio we had a chance to uh, do the sequenza and just to and just can... yeah and, and we've got sort of tight on that ahead of time and then oh, yeah. and then you're playing that ahead of time gave us a kind of a nucleus right. of security that right. um, that others could join could join in on and I think that was a little bit unusual I know I really appreciated um, the programming aspect of putting the sequenza on the first half and then bringing in the shamins on the second half because wow. I sat in the audience and, and listened to you perform mm -hmm. uh, the sequenza and I could hear all the little lines that you and I had in unison yeah. um, so that when I came to play the shamins it was really such a more gratifying uh, way to perform the piece knowing exactly what you were going to do from hearing it prior to that. Well, T tell us a little bit more about, about how you, as, as uh, performers, prepared that piece. This is, this is the thing that a critic is like dying to hear. This is a, the, what, what, what uh, the yeah, conversation... Zach, Zach had the sequenza to start. Yeah. So you already have the sequenza, yeah. now you have to transmute that into mm -hmm. the shamans, but you guys don't. Right. You guys are just yeah. coming... Yeah. You start off at the edge of the cliff. So how do you come to something you... like this? I mean, you open so... it up and go, ah! <laughs> 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 Long way from Mozart. Uh, is, it, is, it, is it ah and oh boy? Or is it yes. just ah? You yes. know? Yeah. No, First it's ah. Like, yeah. And then it's, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. For me too. Yeah. 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 And how much can you work on it uh, completely on your own and, then, and how much has to wait for, for a rehearsal? There's a lot of due diligence on your own first. Yes. yes. A lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A piece like that. We were very, very... When I came to the first rehearsal, I was unbelievably surprised at the level of preparation from the orchestra. I did not expect that at all. I mean, I, I, had, I, was, opti I was optimistic, but at the same time, I knew how difficult the piece was. So I was, I was not expecting people to, to have that kind of level of preparation because a lot of times, you know, pe these musicians, they, they have, they're playing all kinds of concerts all the time, right. where if I've been focusing on this one concert my, my whole... Uh, Especially here in L.A., you hear that studio yeah. musicians can walk in and play anything. Can yeah, you? well, Barrio yeah. is not anything. Barrio is not anything. That's exactly. right. I wanted to ask you uh, about performing both versions of the same idea in the same concert. I had some friends who told me we shouldn't do those pieces together. And I think they should be done together in, yeah. in, in two parts of the concert. Um, the thoughts were there's too much, one version is enough, perhaps uh, we could separate them into different concerts. What are your thoughts, not from a physical, technical standpoint, from a more philosophical, artistic standpoint? Is it a good idea to, to play them together? Of course, I'm sure you think it is a good idea because we... And you programmed it, but any thoughts after the concert as far as uh, having both versions? Maybe you know, you know, I almost feel like like we should have played it again. You know, I I, I heard that uh, Stokowski would now he had the authority to do it uh, to would play you know Schoenberg's Five Pieces for Orchestra mm -hmm. back in when it was very new, and and he would he would turn around and say to the audience, you know, you can't judge that on one hearing. And he would turn around and play it again then. Now, we would have had to take Zach immediately to the hospital at, the, <laughs> at that point. Well, he was holding back. He so. was holding back. <laughs> <laughs> there were two more left. <laughs> but but I mean, as, as um, Allison and, and uh, Lauren were saying, that there's, you know, the piece grows on you. And, and at first, it's so uh, sort of dense. Um, not dense in an opaque way, but, but dense in the... In the um, 
the levels of, of things that are kind of constantly twittering and constantly going on mm -hmm. that at first you 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 can't don't know how to quite hear into it and I don't I think it's hard for the uninitiated to embrace it in that sense I think hearing the sequence of first would help mm -hmm. yes. but but it also made me almost want to do it again you know w one question for Zach uh, I don't know if you thought about this but the sequenza is uh, not uh, written with bar lines. Yeah. You have a certain amount of freedom, and you have to you, you can pursue your energies, let's mm -hmm. say, in a very selfish, individual way. Yes. But when you play the Shema, you have to be alert. Yes. And I think that alertness adds a certain amount of tension, if you want, mm -hmm. on, on top of what you already have. Is mm -hmm. it... Um, more difficult, perhaps it is. Does it uh, make you even more aware of what's happening? Oh, well, absolutely. What, what do you think? I mean, uh, for, for those of you at the concert, uh, I don't know if you noticed, but you know, I had the the, the music stand. In, in an ideal situation, I would have been right next to Young, and he would have been in my sight line. And right. I would have been able to look at my right. music, right. but I didn't have that. So, right. luckily, I had worked my music enough to where mm. I basically had it memorized, so I could basically sort of look at him the right. entire time, and, yes. I, and I was always at a degree angle, sort of like. But that was very apparent and very interesting yeah. to yeah. see, like looking yes. back and forth yeah. from him to the music, yeah. and, and it was very interactive that way. Yeah, yeah, because, yeah. Um, and personally, I find a, a whole new kind of uh, musicianship or artistry inside of rhythm you know so if we're if we're beating in a certain way and as to each time it changes it, it's kind of fun I, I i think it's cool it's like oh we're beating in 516 and, and young has his own way of doing it which took me like i it took me a while to get used to his language of conducting because i that was my biggest talk about biggest fears that was my biggest fears how is he going to conduct you know what am i going to be able to decipher Sort of, because it's so imperative for me to be able to see what he's doing, and if I can't see what he's doing, and we get off, I, you know, I can't get back You're on lost. because I'm yeah. completely lost. Yeah. And, it, and 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 then we're, uh, what, I never had that issue because I always could see exactly what was going on, and uh, it was sort of fun to, you know, like those five sixteen measures, the way that he would do them, sort of in three, and he would he would kind of go one two one one two those kind of things, and and so they're all, each five sixteen measure is a little different. I found that kind of fun. When, when I'm playing it, you know, and I'm sort of, I'm almost trying to conduct along with him in my body, mm -hmm. you know, and try and feel. Mm -hmm. Well, he said a really interesting thing to me. I, I said, oh, can you, were the sight lines okay? Can you, and he said, well, uh, let me, before answering that, let me say that in hearing him play the sequenza, I realized how intuitive he was. And I realized, well, he's so, he talked about being so analytical and making the bar lines. But I think he's actually an intuitive player, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. in, in spite of this analytical overlay that he can bring to it when he needs to. Um, he says, there's two ways. So I said, well, can you see me in the sight lines? He said, well, I can feel you. And, I, you know, and here I have all of these kind of very complicated things. To do. And, and rather than actually seeing me, he's, he's sort of osmosising me somehow. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, I thought that was... That's fun. That was interesting. That was, that was interesting. It's yeah. almost like a dance, you yeah. know? Yeah. Like the, yeah. It's because there's a physical aspect of Absolutely. it in a piece like that when he's conducting. It's with these overly complicated mm -hmm. steps that are, you know, all sort of written out mm -hmm. through composed mm -hmm. dance, so but, to speak. But to be sensitive to that and open to that and then trusting of that, yeah. mm -hmm. I thought was very remarkable. So I always wonder, you're sitting in the audience, you've heard it in a performance setting... Do you want to go back to harmonic fields and redo anything? Did you feel satisfied? Was there something you thought, if I tweak this part, maybe it, they'll understand it better? Or how did you feel? I always have uh, these thoughts, but not this time. As I said, I had a few years to think about this piece. Uh, an earlier version was just recorded and will, will be released, um, I think, on Parma Recordings quite soon. And uh, I wrote a uh, second and a third version of this piece. They were performed uh, in November. I played the piano part, <laughs> piano part in, in one of those uh, concerts. So I had the experience of the um, performer. Um, we had lots of rehearsals. Um, so at, at this point, I think uh, the, the piece uh, is done. And um, I, I can move on to the next uh, project. We were discussing a little bit earlier this um, getting together or of performers and getting to know a score and rehearsing and, and uh, building um, a sense of togetherness. And my experience is, as a composer, um, quite uh, interesting because 
I know in the first hour of a rehearsal I should not have any expectations as, as a composer. Those were some of the most difficult uh, hours I have ever spent after working really hard on a piece and giving it to an ensemble or an, or or an orchestra. Uh, this discovery of a piece the, the first uh, rehearsal, the first hour, is always the most difficult. So I, I really have no expectations, and I, I think you know what I mean from the performer's point of view or the conductor's point of view. So if, if you have three rehearsals and you, and you look uh, at a 100-story building, you know that in the first rehearsal, the first 90 floors are going to be built. At least that's my perception as a as a composer. And then the building that happens from the 90th to the 100th floor is very important. And, and that takes a long time. It can take a second or a third rehearsal. That is the, um, the uh, understanding of the piece. But putting it together in the first uh, rehearsal is an essential step. And, and I know that um, as a composer, I, I need to be patient with that. And I've experienced that in many, many uh, reading sessions. So um, You probably felt the same way, right? The first hour is one of a great discovery and great progress. Then once um, the sounds are settled, uh, you can uh, tweak them, you can uh, polish them, so to speak. Would, would that be fair to...? Mm -hmm. For you? Sure. Yeah. And, and some pieces, of course, you... you um, have more of a, of a sense of what you're after mm -hmm. early on, and other pieces, <laughs> you know, it's a few weeks after the concert. You say, oh, you know what he probably was after was something else. But um, There's another <laughs> strange question. I looked at the score, and I think if I came with a score like this, I wouldn't be able to get a performance very easily. Which so score? It was called like Barry. Oh, Barry. Okay. The, the level of complexity, um, the, the rehearsal uh, time that is involved. There is a certain amount of freedom that a composer earns after having written really good music. And you also know it's Berio, and you, you also know he really meant every note. So you approach a score by an established composer, no matter how difficult it is, with a certain amount of confidence. Now, if it's somebody you don't know, perhaps a younger composer that wrote a very complicated score, you are guarded. Is it fair to say that? Absolutely. Because I think that's, I think that's, you don't know. Be, because, because the amount of effort that goes into a, a mm -hmm. score, I mean, is... is it's time of your life. It's yeah. really precious, you know. I think that's right. I think there's the assumption with a, with an obvious complexity. There's the assumption with a young composer that it's needlessly complex. Mm -hmm. That there was an, a better way and an easier way to get whatever he's after. And is he really sure what he's after? And it's going to take me three hours. A conductor it might take me three hours of looking at these two measures mm -hmm. to even have an mm -hmm. inkling of what mm -hmm. maybe he might be after. And, and, all, and also as a performer who's, who, who, you know, is developing repertoire, you know, I know as difficult as the burial was, I can put that in my repertoire and that other people, you know, want know what it is. Yeah. They'll know exactly what it was. Yeah. Oh, this guy can play sequins. I'd love that. But some 20-year-old kid who may be a talented composer, you know, unfortunately, you know, his name is not as big. And so mm -hmm. if I, you know, put on potential programs, I put him on there and it took me hours and hours to learn this yes. piece, you know. As Salieri said of Mozart, yes. too many notes. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Yeah. But of course, the 20 Mozart was pretty good. Right, so, so that, that's yeah. the, the issue, is yeah. that you can't get as much mileage out of a yeah. younger composer yeah. because they don't have the prestige. But, but you see, to me, this is important. It's the process of validation that gives us composers a certain, a certain amount of freedom. And I have been trying to understand how that works. Who validates you? How many great prizes, how many performances <laughs> do you need to get in order to write three, four, one, eight, five, four? Yeah, well, there's, six, eight, but there's, there's, there's a that uh, complexity. Uh, there's an assumption, yeah, that, there's a line of thought, uh, sort of postmodernistically, that you can no longer have a career like Barrio or Ligeti, that it's become. Times uh, have changed. Chi yeah. Times have yeah. changed. There is no center to mm -hmm. the universe in that, mm -hmm. in that way. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, you know, I mean, there is still this ensemble in contemporary and, and mm -hmm. others where if you get a performance there, you probably are going to get people who can 
um, digest mm -hmm. something fairly mm -hmm. complex. And My take on it, after having and if it's published after, by Universal, you might after having thought about this for twenty mm -hmm. years, is that this process of validation is impossible to understand. Mm -hmm. There are literally no rules. It's, yeah, it's chaotic it, in it, its yeah, nature. It is, is it taste? It, it is fashion, Apparently timing. Yeah. Um, and basically you have forces, and I mean, in, I mean that in a positive way, interests, audiences that want to hear a certain amount of music, uh, a certain type of music, or ensembles that are uh, building an image and would perform that particular type of music. There are forces and energies that you cannot understand as a composer. So what I, under, what, I, what I figured out after these 20 years is that you have to be yourself. It's the idea of honesty. You have to write the music that you believe in, and at some point, the others are going to believe it, too. But if you try to change or adapt just because a certain fashion emerges five, emerges five years after you have started on a path, that's, that's a mistake. So um, I think Berio was... I, I'm not sure if he was concerned with that, but he he had a voice, and he pursued that voice, and eventually people recognized that voice. So that is the model.